but today we're doing the Periscope interview right here in my office. But before we go and start this, let me just show you very briefly my office. Here's Mr. Freeze, for instance, right at the entrance. And then Jimmy Dean, famous painting. And then it's the Predator. And then of course you come right over here, it's from Terminator 2, the Terminator statue. Actually, we used that one in a movie. Then we have from Terminator 1, the skeleton, right here. Then you come right into my office here. And here you have a big office, but right in the beginning we have Ronald Reagan and great presidents here, Reagan, Lincoln, and Kennedy. All of them were made and sculpted by Robert Burks, who was one of my favorite sculptors. Then you come over here, turn around to the fireplace, you see my mother and my father here. They're always watching everything that I do. They still can ask them questions if I'm not sure about which direction to go. But anyway, here we have some fun right here. It's a beautiful painting by uh, Warhol, Russell Means, uh, which I had bought many, many years ago. And then here is usually where I have my meetings. Right here, this is the, this is the chair that I usually sit in. Right here. And this is where I conduct my meetings. Louis Sear, one of the first major strongmen. Here's a picture with me and Gorbachev. This was way back in the 80s. And then you come over here. Here's Teddy Roosevelt, sculpture of Teddy Roosevelt. Also one of my favorite presidents, a great environmentalist, Republican. Love him. And here's my pool table. Uh, this pool table has uh, helped me get a lot of victories and win a lot of games. But I'm not the best pool player in town, but I mean, sometimes I'm lucky. And this is here the trophy display. You have on top here all the bodybuilding trophies. And then on the bottom here you see more awards for movies and entertainment oriented things or lifetime achievement awards. And this is only like, I would say, 10% of the awards that they have because the others are in storage because you can't just have put everything out. Uh, but anyway, I'm very proud of those statues because it was the first Mr. Universe trophies and Mr. Europe trophies and strongman uh, events. As a matter of fact, right here, this was my first trophy that I won at the age of 18 when I went and won the best built men of Europe in the junior division. So this is where it all began. Anyway, let's sit down and uh, do the interview. Oh, there's an airplane right up there on top, which is an airplane that uh, that we used in True Lies. And Jim Cameron gave me that for my birthday, uh, right after we finished the True Life. The true lies, and this is of course uh, an airplane that was actually in a movie, not for long, just a few seconds, but it was a very, very important scene where it made it believable, like that I'm actually flying this carrier jet. Anyway, let's sit down over here at the desk and then do the interview. As you can see, I have an elephant here, which is the Republican symbol. Uh, but this beautifully well sculpted elephant, I love it. And then, of course, there's other animals. There's the bear, uh, big grizzly bear over here, and, and of course, some Western sculptures, which of course I love. And then, uh, uh, okay, let's do the interview. All right, the first question is why would you keep your zombie daughter and Maggie? Why would I keep her? Yeah. Uh, like, why would you keep her around? Well, I think it is uh, maybe not the most rational decision to keep her around, but it's my love for her. And it's very hard when you have a situation where normally, you know, people will get to a quarantine after a certain period of time, uh, you know, and the police comes or they just, you know, take her in, the authorities take her in. It just breaks your heart to think about that, that all of a sudden she's going to be taken in there and the last uh, week or two, she's gonna spend with strange people and slowly deteriorate and die. I just, as a father, could not handle that. 
and uh, my love was stronger for her and this is why I kept her at the house until the last second before, you know, the end. Do you think that Maggie would do the same for you if it was reversed and I you think, were the zombie? I think that she made it very clear, uh, you know, uh, when she said that to me. She said, look, you know, don't worry about me or me. I'm here now to protect you. I want to make sure that you're protected. And that basically says that I will do everything that I can, even though if my animalistic instincts come out and my zombie instincts will come out, I will do everything that I can not to go and hurt you, not to bite you, not to infect you with this uh, same disease and so. And then the rest of it you will see in the movie, because then as soon as you see the movie, you will see that, uh, you know, yes, she would do exactly the same thing for me, plus much more. What was your favorite scene to film for Maggie? I think my favorite scene was when she came running in after she has gotten you know, to the point where she uh, became very aggressive and she uh, uh, kind of started biting and, and, and eating more meat and uh, having a thirst for blood and stuff like that. And she ran into the forest and she found a fox and uh, bit that fox. And, uh, and imagine for a human being to do that. I mean, this is wild. And so I saw her coming back from the forest with blood all over her face. And she runs into the kitchen and she's totally confused, doesn't know what to do because of this kind of new kind of aggression that she has gained. And uh, so we run all into the kitchen, my wife and I, and we hold her and hug her. And that scene that played out after that, when we are trying to calm her down, that she goes back, comes back to normal and all this, that scene to me was one of my favorite scenes, if not the favorite scene that I've done in this movie, because she was so good. Uh, I mean, I mean, it's unbelievable that the acting of everyone, and I think that uh, because it was so believable, I just really got into it. How long did Maggie take to film? Uh, Maggie uh, was probably the shortest film that I've ever done. Uh, and with the lowest budget, it was like seven million budget, and it would be filmed it in five weeks. Uh, and uh, the reason why we got the film done in five weeks was a, it wasn't really like a huge stunts and, and huge action scenes that had to be set up. But the most important thing was that the director, Henry Hobson, was just very well prepared, frame by frame, scene by scene, uh, take by take. I mean, it was really well prepared so that when we got to the set in the morning, we rehearsed. And you knew that by the time we were finished rehearsing, we were ready to shoot. He also, with his entire uh, camera team and every sound team, everyone was ready to film. And we filmed them from that point on all the way to lunch. Sometimes we would push lunch and film them all the way through the night. And uh, I think that because of that uh, unbelievable energy and a smaller group of people, because there was less money around, I think we were moving very fast and to something that you normally do in 10 weeks, we did in five weeks. What would your weapon of choice be for the zombie apocalypse? Um, I would say that they probably will use the swords. Um, hold on a second, let me just show you. I have here a bunch of Conan swords. Let me just move this back here a little bit. And if you look back here down, you see a bunch of swords. And this actually here is the original Conan sword. So this sword I would probably take and just boom, you know, put it through uh, someone's heart. Uh, but this is all, like I said, easier said than done because when it is your own daughter, of course, you couldn't do that. I was not able to do it. I had a shotgun there. Uh, with me and I had the shot that the doctor gave me. I had everything, but I just couldn't do it. Did you like working with Abigail on Maggie? Abigail was an absolute jewel to work with uh, because she's a professional. I think everyone knows that she's a fantastic actress. And I got to see firsthand why she's such a fantastic actress. I mean, she's, uh, she rehearses, she studies the character and um, she really gets into it, and you don't ever get the feeling that she's acting. You feel actually she is the person. She is the character. It's really extraordinary to, to watch that, and then it makes, of course, your performance much better, too. Would it leave the door where it is now. Thank you.
Yeah. How, how different was it making Maggie compared to your other movies? Oh, it was, uh, to me, it was uh, such a team effort. I think there's something to be said about small movies and about those character-driven movies uh, because you spend much more time on, um, which is, you, you, you spend much more time in scene development and, and, and uh, character development and uh, you're right in a moment um, I, just, I, I just really enjoyed doing this movie and I think it had to do with that we had really terrific actors and a director that was just really mind-blowing with the way he understood the character and the way he directed and everything like that. So I really had a terrific time doing that. All right, two more questions. Do you think you'll be interested in doing more lower budget serious movies after this? Absolutely. I think, like I said in my interviews in the past, that in the beginning it was all about you know climbing up that ladder and making sure that I am as uh, the highest paid actor. I was competing against you know uh, Dustin Hoffman and Sylvester Stallone and Clint Eastwood and all of those guys climbing up to the top until I became the highest paid actor. And also Jack Nicholson I should put into that category because he was also uh, you know on top of that ladder. But now when you have the money. You know, then you have the joy of when you have accomplished that goal. Then you can relax more and you say, okay, now I should really not pay so much attention to money, but pay more attention to the kind of scripts that I get, the quality of the scripts, the quality of the writing, the quality of the directing and orders, and think more about those things and not about the money. And so this is basically uh, how I feel now. So I will be doing more character driven movies. And someone asked, when does Maggie come out? Well, Maggie is coming out today, right now. As a matter of fact, in the West Coast, it is 11 o'clock, so it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon uh, in uh, on the East Coast. So it's coming out right now. It's playing there right now. So go and see the movie. And uh, since we're finishing off with Maggie, let me show you so that you're reminded of one more close-up right here on the Maggie poster. So it's here to see you, Arnold. Hello, how are you? Good hey, I can yeah. just talk about it. <laughs> okay, come on in, Henry. Come on in. This is Henry Hobson. I didn't even know he's coming to visit. Yeah. But he came here probably to drink a glass of champagne. And uh, so I can wish him good luck today and he can wish me good luck today. That's it. Go and see the movie.